This tutorial assumes you know the basics of working in Blender. If you're using version 4.1 or earlier, make sure you have Ambient Occlusion activated under the Render tab. I add an Ambient Occlusion node and activate Inside. This will detect convex shapes. I connect the color output to the base color of the principal BSDF. As I change the distance, I can now see the edges. I add a color ramp between the AO and principal BSDF. This will allow me to further control the edges. I change the interpolation to ease to make sure the edge is softer. I move the black color stop to around 0 0.6. I duplicate the AO node and disable inside. Add a mixed color node and change the blending node to value. This combines the hue and saturation of the background color and the value of the foreground color. I connect the top AO node to the A input of the mixed color node and the bottom AO node to the bottom input. I connect the mixed color node to the color ramp. Add a second mixed color node and connect the first mixed color node to the factor of the new mixed color node. I change the blending mode to mix. Add a noise texture and connect the factor to the A input of the second mixed color node. I change the B input color of the second mixed color node to white. I can adjust the black color stop as needed. As I increase the options of the noise texture, I can distort the edge wear. I add a brightness contrast node between the color ramp and the principal BSDF. This node will increase the overall brightness of the material, and the contrast makes brighter pixels brighter and darker pixels darker. I set the brightness to 1 and the contrast to 2. I select these nodes, except the principal BSDF and material output nodes, and use Ctrl G to group them. Connect the group input to the distance of each of the AO nodes. I also connect the new outputs to each of the noise texture options. I also connect the group input to the contrast input. If I use Shift right mouse button and drag over the noodle, I can add a reroute node. With the reroute node selected, I can use the G key to grab it and move it. This will help keep everything a bit neater and easier to read. I tab out of the group and rename the group node to AO Edge. This will allow me to make any changes I need with just one node. I'll be using a metal texture that I downloaded from Ambient CG. The link is in the description. I add a mix color node. I add an image texture and open the color map. I connect the image texture to input A of the mix color shader and set the input B color to black. For the base color, I'll use a second metal texture from Ambient CG. The link is in the description. I add an image texture and open the albedo map. 
I connect this to the B input of the mix color node. I connect the AO edge group to the fact of the mix color and connect the mix color to the base color. I now import the roughness, metalness, and normals maps for both textures. I change each of the color space on the textures to non-color. I duplicate the mixed color shader and connect each of these maps as needed, making sure to connect the AO map group to the factors. I also add a normal map node and connect the mix color node for the normal maps to the color input. I connect the normal map node to the normal of the principal BSDF and increase the strength. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video about making procedural edgeware in Blender, you may enjoy this video. Have a good day.